Hey guys, it's Vince. Today I'm on the workbench and I'm actually going over a client's system for servicing because apparently they had a blown drive. They didn't feel comfortable replacing it themselves, so I'm replacing it. Um, this system was sent in by Works Holsters and I'm going through testing everything, voltages and whatnot. I've already analyzed what drive is blown, but I wanted to cover the process because I feel that it, there's a lot to learn here as far as how this process can be implemented for the guys that want to try it themselves and do it safely. First and foremost, you see my terminal block here. Now whether you're using my system or another system, this terminal block extends the leads from the power supply and the e-stop signal, it extends it to the motherboard of the G540. You then have the drives of the G540. Now if you buy my system, you also get the allocation sticker, which can be used to cross-reference what terminals are what. So you just lay this this way, because if we lay it this way, it correlates to how it would be mounted on the drive. This way you have a cheat sheet so you know what actual terminal is connected to what. Okay, we want to test the motherboard first to make sure the motherboard itself is functioning as it should. So what I'm going to do now is safely I can power on the system with the leads extended and we can see if we get a green go light on the motherboard without any drives plugged in. Okay, we're good to go. We know that's set. You can also test the e-stop. Everything there works perfect, so we know the board itself is good. Now what we got to figure out, and you can see I've got tape on my drives. Now you don't see tape on this drive because I've already identified it as bad. What I use the tape for is an identifier so that I know I'm not going to chase my tail after a drive has been checked. So if I want to test this unit and I want to test an axis, now all I have to do is unscrew a drive, plug it into the board. I'm going to do this very briefly. You don't have to plug it all the way in, you just want to make sure your contacts are in and you can see I got a slight gap there. We don't care about that because again, we're on a rubber pad right here. My, my uh, uh, work desk is always going to be insulated in my instance. I hope yours are as well. You want to make sure there is no conductive material underneath when you're testing. And now what we're going to do is cycle on the system once again and we're going to test this drive. If we get a green go light, we know we're good. If we don't, then we know that drive is bad. Okay, we're good to go with that. Drive is functioning, we'll press our e-stop, everything is set. Done. Now I'll unplug. You see how fast I did that? We're not trying to generate heat on the drive, we're just testing it to see functionality. Now I unplug it. We know this drive is good. I'm going to show you in the event of a bad drive, which has already been confirmed, once again, this, this drive right here. And again, it's very interesting to take a peek at this because a lot of times guys will say, well, there's no burn marks on the drive and this, that, and the other thing. Well, if you don't have an oscilloscope and you can't, and you don't have all of the electronic tools to analyze the drive, it will look to the naked eye under most conditions, <clears throat> excuse me, like it's a good drive. However, you will find that it's most likely bad. And in this instance, it is, and we can test it real quick. Same process. Just little bit in we know we're good we got that slight little gap and then we're gonna power on the system now the e-stop is not depressed and you see we have a red fault light I'm pressing the e-stop there's no change in our red fault light we know that drive is toast that's your bad drive and now we simply replace the drive okay in the event you had to test other drives which I've already done you would then apply tape to that other drive so that you know you've already tested them. Okay, it's a very simple process. Now the big thing is be organized. And when I say that, I see guys doing random crap that doesn't always make sense, especially on YouTube. You wanna be as neat as possible because the neater you are, the more organized you are, your brain will function in a, a much smoother pattern. This is factual. Okay, studies have been done on that. So when you see guys' workshops all crazy and things everywhere, it's real easy to get discombobulated. When you're doing it like this, it's very, very quick to analyze what's going on and what needs to be done. The other thing I want to point out, if this board was bad, or you wanted to check an individual, individual axis on the board, you would have a naturally red fault light on the board immediately. That's why we identify that right out of the gate. Everything else here has to be done in sequence. If you do it in sequence, the way I said it, you can have your system up and running in literal seconds in comparison to an IDS individual drive system where you'd have to go in, unwire everything. I mean, it's a much, much more complicated process. 
that is why I recommend these systems to be used, especially for businesses, because it's a much quicker process. I've got about another 15 to 20 minutes possible to install everything, make sure it's neat. I'll check voltage on power supply, make sure everything is set to go, and then we're all good. So again, I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope you guys have learned something. Thank you again. Take care.